Right, let's get on with checking the FETs, the NMOS pouch fits. In the low channel, we've got this uh, meter is selected to forward diode voltage drop beep mode. It's okay, so it's just checking for continuity, really. And this one's reading 7 ohms across that FET. 7 ohms. And that's, that's completely shorted. I'll just show you what a good one reads. This is a good board that's been previously repaired by yours truly just now and we've got open circuit all open circuit okay and if I put this onto ohms now if I just put this onto normal ohms uh, it's auto ranging ohms up to meg ohms and there I've got 43.7k ohm. So you're looking in at for impedance of 50 odd k ohm. It could vary on your, it's probably non-linear, probably depends on your meter, but 50k ohm is roughly about the right type amount. And whilst we're here, we'll just check this one as well. On a good board, we're looking at about 100 kilo ohms across those two connections. You can see where I'm connecting. This is, it's the drain and the source of the FET in that polarity, okay? So let's just check the other board. Again, again, just a reminder, this is the bad board. Bad board. Same polarity. I'm getting 75 kilo ohms. It's probably because this is shorted, but this bet here is reading 12.9 ohms, so it's faulty, okay? So the FET is faulty. I'm going to change both, so we have to remove both, and we're gonna check these components around here. So I'm going to remove these FETs and then show you how to check the components, okay? So, put the blower on. I'll plug the blower in. Right, so the low side effect. Turn the hot air gun on, set it to 340 degrees, uh, medium airflow, clock stopper on. Using this uh, stuff, Kingbow Flux, so I've mentioned this before, it's the BGA placement flux. Very, very useful for stopping up style. The old trusty brush. Some flux on there. And whilst we're at it, we're going to do both FETs. So I want to do this one as well. And the heat sinks, okay? So a little bit of flux to just stop it um, oxidizing and just keep the solar in better condition, just make it a bit easier. First thing to do is to get your iron and I use a, because it's a repair and I'm not bound over by the uh, ROHS uh, regulations, I'm going to use some leaded solder so I'm just going to preheat these transistors with a little bit of leaded solder just to make a, an alloy which has a lower melting point and it melts more comfortably. Can you see that? Can you see that? Okay, it's melted. You can, I mean, this is a very good iron. You might not necessarily need, if you heat these up, look, if you do this to these, and just keep moving around, you can remove these transistors with a solder iron, but you do need a very good 60. I think this is a 60 watt power, um, soldering iron. And you can probably get it to go just with the iron. There you go. Push it to one side. And that's got that component off there. And it's quite handy actually. Make sure you don't disturb these Johnnies down here because they can be a real pain. Um, if you slip with your iron, you're going to scoot them off in, into the bushes basically. And now we're going to have a go at the other one. This is one with the heat sink on. So again, a little bit of direct heat on there just to warm the thing up so the hot air doesn't have to do all the work okay just a little bit of preheat and then because it is an air driven heat sink it will soak the heat up nicely there she goes okay there it is so that's that bit off it's just uh get my tweezers and remove that put it in a safe place so it can be put back later interesting how even though they're in the similar switching this one has needs a heat sink and the other one clearly 
was deemed not to need a heat sink. I find that um, tells you something about the design of this, but I'm not quite sure what. That slips out of view there, I'm not sure how much you saw. So let's have a go with this. A uh, little bit again, solder. And I'll just show you the alternative mode here is to apply some auxiliary heat from the heat gun. It just makes things stay molten more easily, less work for the soldering iron to do. You might not be able to do this with a soldering iron unless you've got the right type of soldering iron with a very good thermal conductivity to the tip. Now, uh, oh look at that, look underneath, look underneath. That's slightly out of focus isn't it, I wonder if I can focus that a little bit better. Uh, right, turn the hot air gun off, I think that's vibrating the, uh, the rack slightly which uh, onto which the camera is mounted. Yeah, it wasn't bad focus, it was, <laughs> it was vibration. Um, yeah, look at that, you can see that, I'll clean that up in a minute, you'll be able to see that more clearly, but that precisely illustrates the point. And look what it's done to the back of the FET. Can you see that? That's bored a hole in the, in the FET itself. It's been arcing away, arcy, 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 until finally it's burnt its way, spark eroded its way inside the FET and then damaged the FET. This thing's probably been working and sparking a lot and just, um, yeah, of course it's an RF spark, it's going at 75 kilohertz, I think, or thereabouts. And yeah, you've got that. And when they're in this condition, the back of the FETs, this can be a real pain if that's carbonised in there, All right? So where we go with this one, it really um, depends. Let's just check the effects, see if there's any burnt out holes. That one's okay, look, clean, right? I'm pretty sure it's, and I've never seen um, anyone have a hole burnt in it like this, except on the Bose unit. A jolt of current through them, you can blow them open circuit, then they start sparking and arcing, especially if you've got an RF or a high spiking current like this at 75 kilohertz or so then it can sit there just eating away at it and you get a little plasma in there and then you get the spark erosion and you've got to ask yourself where has the metal gone out of there because there's a big chunk of metal missing out of this device can you see that hole? can you see that hole? it's amazing isn't it? Um, so we'll have a go at this board but if this is too badly damaged inside we're in a little bit of trouble, I think, with this one. Um, we can bypass, it goes from this point here, you see this, I think it's that connector, don't quote me at the moment, but I think it's that one, it's certainly that one or that one, it's one of those two, goes down to here to power this FET. So to clean that up, um, what we do is we put a little bit more of the old king bow on, get this squirty. You can be quite generous with this. You use isopropyl alcohol or IPA to wash it off. And um, I'm probably teaching you guys how to suck eggs. I bet you can change these faster than me. But in the meantime, um, this is a video for people who want to have a go and know enough about it not to electrocute themselves. Your responsibility. I don't want to upset wives, girlfriends, boyfriends phoning me up and saying, Whoa, they had a nasty shock. It's all your fault. So just use the old um, solder braid just to hoover things up and clean them around a bit. If you get the, if you take the solder iron off, this will solder itself onto the pad. And then if you pull it, it will pull the pad off. So don't do that. You've been warned. I just have a PCB operator to come back to. We all looking sad because the controller had been written off because she accidentally pulled the um, tracking off with the solder braid when she was doing her component change. Which is a bit annoying actually when you go for a component change and it comes back and the boards are right off. That's annoying. Now I need a bit. That's uh, leaded solder. That can be quiet. Some leaded solder on it. There you go. Well there we go. I must stop saying that actually. Okay, so hoover that up. And then the same with the the other pads. Where are you getting there? I've got 
really got the wrong tip on this thing. Good old scrub up. And then this one. Okay. So finally, let the solder on, get this heat back, get the mojo back. A bit of solder on there actually, it might help. Brown flux, but actually, when we clean this off with some isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol um, or IPA, but not Indian Pale Ale, it'll look okay. It'll look okay. Trust me, it'll look okay. So let's just zoom off, just back off a little bit. We'll go back into zoom in a minute. And then we'll give it a good old brush over with the isopropyl alcohol. Well, we won't because my hair dye bottle. For those of you young guns out there who don't know, this is a hair dye bottle. Very useful when you get older and you need to start dyeing your hair, or your wife does, because they're very useful little squirty bottles, complete with the little cappy thing to go on the top. You can put your solvents in. Um, so, IPA. Give it a go, wash and brush. Okay. And then it's best to hold it over a bin or something and just um, rinse it off. I'm going to do that in my, over my bin. And just run some over the top of it and away you go, it comes up nice and clean. Be careful if you clean the board up and then you switch it on. Um, get rid of this detritus. These are going into the graveyard, these transistors. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. if you turn the board on and there's a spark, say a, a transistor explodes or something, it'll go up in flames. It'll ignite the residue of the IPA you've got on there, so be careful because you could end up with a fireball. Um, yeah, I've uh, lost my eyebrows a couple of times, leaning over something, looking to see where the smoke was coming from, then suddenly the smoke erupts with a spark and then the IPA is on fire, then your eyebrows are gone. So, yeah. Keep your mum on speed dial, as ABE says. So now you can see if we go into uh, Tele Macroid. Yeah, so there you go. You can see what's happened. What do we do now? Weird, isn't it? You can see almost the carbon has been reduced, and then you can almost see something poking through there. It almost looks like it might be carbon. I don't think it is. I think it's just naked circuit board. RF arcing has a weird effect on metal. Um, it kind of sputters it away. There's a process called sputtering, which is similar, which uses RF, and uh, you can erode. That's how sort of hardened mold tools are made for things like mugs and computer housings by sputtering a lump of carbon into a steel block with a solvent present. Um, a process invented in High Wycom in the UK. There it is, and I've got me, me dental pick. You won't feel a thing, madam, honestly. Right. It's just PCB, isn't it? Just a PCB under there. Yeah, so it's blank PCB, so it's eaten away at the PCB. It's an odd thing. It's an odd, odd thing. You know, you think, when you see this, you think, oh, was it the uh, happened started? Did this process start inside the transistor? Or did this process start in the board? Um, it's a weird one. I've never seen any reference to it anywhere else. Just to remind you what the transistor looks like, I'm going to put them down there side by side. And that's what that looks like. It's a bit like um, Alien, you know, did it start on the inside and eat its way out, or start on the outside and eat its way in? I've never seen this in any other position except on, a, on this transistor Q500 on this Bose sound dock. I do know that when I have seen it 
it's been the right bugger to fix the board so it's going to be interesting so when we measured that transistor and it was open circuit interestingly enough we assumed that it wasn't damaged because it wasn't leaking or at least we couldn't see a degree of leakage which was clear on the meter if i go onto this transistor now i bet it's still open circuit isn't it yeah so it's um it's open circuit for the wrong reasons it's not it's not short circuit is it blown open so obviously the silicon wafer and all the stuff inside here is well and truly knackered basically very strange so leave me a moment and I'll come back to you I'm just going to investigate